Hi hey guys, Tom here. Uh, just before we get into today's video, I am planning on doing a Q&A video over the next week or so. So if you've got any questions that you would like me to answer, investing related or otherwise, drop them down in the comments below and I will see if we can include that in the next Q&A video we do. So um, that's all from me for now. Let's get into the video. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Oh, sleepy. Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day and enjoy today's video. If you do, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So um, today I wanna dive into some real stock market basics, uh, talk through why we wanna focus on businesses rather than focusing on stocks, uh, talk about why businesses go public in the first place, and hopefully give you a good sort of overview around my approach to investing in the stock market versus trading or speculating or short-term investing or anything like that. So uh, as I say, hope you enjoy the video, but for now, let's get into it. All right, so first off, I just wanna focus on some real basic fundamentals of what the stock market actually is, and that in a lot of ways is going to inform how we approach putting money into the stock market or pulling, pulling money out of the stock market at various points in time. So um, the stock market is actually a secondary market. So it's a secondary market for ownership in businesses. We can buy uh, shares in businesses. If we buy shares in Apple, that means we have a percentage, a small percentage ownership in the overall business of Apple. He got me invested in some kind of fruit company. And so then I got a call from him saying, we don't have to worry about money no more. And I said, that's good. One less thing. So you now own a business that's selling iPhones, that makes service revenue from Apple Music, all these different things. Uh, you are an owner in that business. You're entitled to some of the profits of that business. Uh, and you have a team of employees and managers sort of running that business. So that is fundamentally what the stock market is. It's a place that um, everyday people, professional investors, uh, pension fund managers can trade, they can buy and sell these pieces of ownership uh, in a business and have that exposure to great businesses uh, over the long term and hopefully make a good amount of profit from that. So um, that's what the stock market fundamentally is and I think um, as basic as it sounds, a lot of people forget that when it comes to actually implementing an investment strategy. So you'll see people looking to do things like time the stock market. They'll say, the stock market's very high right now, I don't want to invest as much, or the stock market's very low right now, I want to invest a lot. Uh, and they might not necessarily be focusing on what the underlying businesses that you're actually purchasing shares in are doing, um, which sounds very strange. It's, it's very much sort of, looking into a crystal ball and, and trying to figure out what's going to happen based off oftentimes various technical indicators around momentum and all these different kind of complicated terms. Um, personally, I like to boil it down and keep it quite simple. Uh, and that is I want to identify good businesses that I can buy at good prices uh, and just, just approach it exactly the same as if I was to go out and buy a rental property, um, buy a car wash, buy a laundromat down the road, buy any other business business or any other investment, uh, I want to look at the cash flows of that business, how much I'm going to get out of it versus how much I'm paying, and then figure out whether that's a good option or not. So um, that's the approach that I personally take. I just want to spend a little bit of time on why on why companies end up as public in the first place because obviously not every company is public and um, obviously someone founded Apple back in the day and someone founded Microsoft back in the day. Uh, so why did they give up some sort of ownership in, in their business and put themselves under all the stress of, of being a public company and having that massive exposure? Uh, let's get into that. So fundamentally, there are really two reasons why 
a business may choose to go public. And oftentimes, uh, it's a combination of these two things. So uh, when a business goes public, essentially what happens is they have what's called an IPO or an initial public offering. That is basically the first time that ownership or shares in this business are offered to the public in exchange for basically cash. So um, there's really two reasons, like I said, why a business does this. The first one is to raise money. So typically these businesses are relatively early stage. Some of them will be profitable. Many of them will be still losing money and building out their business and growing at quite a rapid rate. And essentially they need cash to fund those, those operations. So if they're still uh, you know, developing their initial products or doing the research and development side of their business before they really can grow revenue and grow profit uh, a long, long way, they're going to need cash to, to kind of get up to speed with what they're trying to do. So that's really the first reason that a business goes public is to simply get cash to, to fund their operations. And really the only time that a company really benefits from being public uh, is through their IPO. So after their IPO, that's the you know initial offering, that's when the cash goes to the business and they can have that, have that money to run their operations. Uh, and that's really the only time that they get cash. They can do other things like issue shares and raise capital um, you know, further down the track if they want. But to keep things simple, the real big benefit for a company is when they first go public, that's when they get the cash injection. Uh, if their stock price goes up or down after that point, it really doesn't affect the underlying business uh, as much as as much as you might think. So. Uh, the company doesn't you know, get a whole bunch of extra cash just because their stock goes high or get a whole bunch less cash just because their stock goes low. Uh, they get that cash all up front in one hit when they first go public. So that's the first reason why uh, a company will typically go public. The second reason is for existing shareholders to uh, convert their ownership, ownership in that business to cash. Uh, so basically to realize some of the value that they've created either by being the founder of this business or either by being a very early maybe private investor in this business. So Uber is actually a really good, good example of this. Uber has, has gone public just in the last 12 months um, and there were a lot, a lot, a lot of sort of private uh, rounds of funding. So whenever Uber was running out of money and they needed a cash injection to continue growing and growing, they would go out to private inv investors. Those private investors would give Uber some money uh, in exchange for ownership in that business. So um, a little bit like an IPO in some ways, but this wasn't a deal that was open to the public. This all happened behind closed doors. Uh, and one of the thing that one of the things that is really tricky for early investors in, in those situations is their ownership in a company like Uber is not all that liquid. So they can't easily uh, sell out of it. They can't easily buy more or anything like that like you can do in the stock market. So that's another reason why companies often go public. So those early investors have an opportunity to you know, realize some of the growth of Uber and some of the, the value that they've created through that business by being a really early investor. Uh, they can sell some of those shares, turn it into cash, diversify their portfolio and put it into other things. So that's really the second reason why a company goes public. So um, just wanted to touch on that just so you have a good bit of background on why companies go public in the first place uh, and why businesses you know open themselves up to all this public scrutiny by analysts and people like me and, and you and all that sort of thing um, so the last thing I just want to dive into is treating stocks as businesses so we want to buy businesses we want to sell businesses we don't want to buy and sell stocks um, they may sound like the same thing, but really it's more of a kind of mental hack that I like to use as well. So let's talk about that for a couple of minutes, so hang around. All right, so now that we have a fundamental understanding around why a business goes public, why it puts itself out there on the stock market, and now that we understand that the stock market and shares that you buy represent some ownership in that underlying business, I think we now have a couple of ideas that we can carry forward and use to sort of inform our investment strategy as we as we move uh, through our investment journey. So uh, the first thing is we really wanna focus on buying businesses 
investors and not stocks. That is one of the very first things I ever learned from investors like, like Warren Buffett and Phil Town and Charlie Munger is they don't focus on buying individual shares in their head at least when they're doing analysis of a business they focus on buying the whole business so um, when they run the numbers when they look at apple when they look at costco when they look at monster energy whatever it might be they look at how much is this business selling for so um, in practical terms that's the market cap of that business how much is uh, all the shares a hundred percent ownership of that company selling for which is the market cap and how much does it produce and how much is it likely to produce in the future so what's the free cash flow or the earnings today and how are those earnings looking like they might grow out 5 10 15 20 years from now so that's the type of analysis that, that those guys are looking at and warren buffett puts it like this so he says uh, if you can't value the business and you're not comfortable putting a high percentage of your net worth in it, uh, if you're not, you know, if your net worth is $100,000, if you're not comfortable putting seventy or $80,000 into it, you shouldn't buy a single share. You shouldn't put five or $10 into it even. That is the level of conviction that Warren Buffett likes to really have before he goes into investments uh, and there's a couple of things that, that come along with that as well so it means that you're really going to focus hard on businesses really get a good understanding of what that company does what it's likely to do in the future and what it's worth as well so um, if you were to put uh, you know a hundred percent or maybe even 300 percent if you're taking out taking out debt to put into a rental property for example uh, you're going to want to have an extremely good idea of what that rental property is likely to produce in rent, what you're gonna to have to pay in rates and taxes, uh, what you can claim or write off on depreciation, uh, all these different things. You're gonna have a really, really good idea of what sort of return cash flow wise you're gonna get from that investment property. And Warren Buffett tells us to basically treat businesses exactly the same. Look at how much cash flow you're gonna get from that business relative to how much you have to pay for it and then decide whether it's a good deal. So there's plenty of great companies out there. I've made videos on this before as well. There's plenty of great companies, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, all these companies are gonna be around for a long, long time. They're gonna grow into the future. The underlying business is gonna do very, very well. Uh, but if we pay too much up front for that business, then the returns that we're going to get are going to be quite poor. So um, you definitely have to pay attention to price and you definitely have to understand the business are really the first couple of things there. Uh, the other thing that you really get when you focus on businesses rather than stocks is you tend to get away from sort of, sort of market timing and trying to forecast short-term stock prices and speculation as Ben Graham would put it. So uh, Ben Graham's the father of value investing. He wrote The Intelligent Investor, which you might just be able to see behind me, I'm not too sure. Uh, but basically he said that an investment is something that offers safety of principle and an adequate return. Everything else is speculation. So anytime that um, you, know, you, you see someone saying, oh, you know, Donald Trump's not going to get elected and he's the stock market president and you know that's going to change what the S&P 500 does and all those sorts of things that is speculation that is not using underlying performance data about a business to predict your returns that is making a short-term prediction based off you know some outside force that in reality is potentially not going to have a huge amount to do with how uh, you know an individual company runs uh, Microsoft are not going to change their product lineup or their prices or you know I'm not going to change my opinion on whether I want to use Microsoft software just because the president of the United States changes so um, don't don't speculate on things that that aren't necessarily going to have a huge influence on your business uh, on the businesses that you're looking at so I mean of course there's going to be there's going to be political forces and other things that may have a small influence on a business or a big influence on a business uh, in some cases but in the vast 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 majority of situations it doesn't matter so focus on business performance don't focus on the little stock chart that's moving up and down uh, make an assessment of what you can really get out of that business cash flow wise pay an appropriate price uh, and you can't help but do well so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit like hit subscribe you can watch some older videos over there if you would like um, 
and you can hit subscribe over there if you haven't done so already. So hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day. Cheers.